Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to Tea with Tea for our 10th episode, fresh from our mid-season hiatus. Bow, 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 bow. Um, in case you were wondering where I dropped off to, I did three back-to-back mini-mesters this summer, and I definitely underestimated the kind of bandwidth that was going to take. I mean, I literally did nothing for weeks, but classwork and the bare minimum to keep my baby alive. <laughs> um Shout out to Eric for putting the team on his back. I mean, he made sure that I ate. He made sure that Charlie wasn't just some feral child left to fend for himself. Um, But all that, you know, diving back into schoolwork and researching, it really made me want to get back into my old major of human sexuality. And over the years, I've really learned that our country is shamefully, like shamefully behind on sex education. A report from the Guttmacher Institute noted that only 33 states require HIV information be taught and 18 require that contraceptive information is taught. Of all 50 states, only 13 require that sex ed be medically accurate. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that in case that didn't sink in. 13, 1, 3 out of 50, 5, 0, require that sex ed be medically accurate. So the rest, I mean, who knows what they're up to, but they are not requiring that sex ed be medically accurate. On the other side of the coin, 37 states require that abstinence be taught in their sex education, and 25 of those require it be stressed as the only form of contraception. I mean, hell, the federal government funds abstinence until marriage education, and in 2016, their budget was increased to $85 million, which explains why so many states would rather just teach students to avoid sex, you know, even though the U.S. has one of the highest rates of teen pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections among other industrialized nations. So with abstinence-only education obviously not working, and most states not even requiring sex ed be medically accurate, that means a lot of kids and teenagers, hell, even grown-ups, are stuck learning from Hollywood, which is wrong, or porn, which is hella wrong, or their peers, which, I mean, do I even need to explain why that's wrong? It's the blind leading the blind. So many people are willfully ignorant and others get a kick out of sharing misinformation. I mean, hell, there are people who genuinely believe that if a woman's body and diet is, quote, clean enough, end quote, she won't get a period. Which, I mean, I can't even deal with that right now. We'll dig into that another time. But while we're in the age of information, not everything on Google will be right, and not everything we see on the internet is accurate. Another major issue with this type of sexual education is not only are they glazing over biological aspects and bare minimums about how things work, but there's little to no education about sexual identity or sexual orientation, which, FYI, only nine states have any content regarding inclusive sexual orientation. A handful of states outright forbid talking about orientation. Sexual identity is huge to a person's psychological makeup, and we're just sending people out into the world to live their lives blindly? I mean, if we aren't learning about it when we're developing, when the hell are we supposed to learn about it? I mean, sexuality is a huge spectrum. You can take place anywhere on this line. It's not just one of two buckets that you sit in and then you strap in. That's it for you for the rest of your life. It's no wonder that LGBTQIA youth are at huge risks for suicide and STIs because of this archaic, if we don't talk about it, it won't happen bullshit. I mean, if kids aren't learning about other orientations, let alone their own, if they're LGBTQIA, then how are they supposed to learn how to act as themselves and how are people supposed to learn how to interact with them? I mean, just like the whole cornerstone of abstinence-only training is if we teach kids about sex, then they'll have sex. Like, that whole argument is ridiculous. Research has shown, it's proven, that kids and teenagers who get comprehensive sex sex education, including learning about contraception, they have lower risks of pregnancy and STIs, rather than those who have little to no sex ed. I mean, hell, look at the Netherlands. They have a super comprehensive sex ed program. Uh, They call it Spring Fever, and it starts as early as kindergarten. 
I mean, obviously they leave the detailed biological and orientation talks for when they get older, but it's sexuality education mostly at that early stage because the goal is bigger for them than just what does what and what goes where. How much of sexuality just makes up who you are. And look, the Netherlands has the lowest teen pregnancy and HIV STI rates in the world, five times lower than the United States. So that's the why as to what we're doing for the rest of the, the season. And here's how we're going to work for the rest of the season. I want to dedicate an episode to a topic, which means we'll stretch out to about every other week for posting so I can really give detailed explanations and citations the whole nine. And as always, the show notes will be chock-a-block full of infographics and charts and graphs and pictures. But don't worry, I'll be sure to warn you when the show notes are going to be, you know, NSFW, just in case you're wanting to peruse it not around people. I mean, we've all done the look over someone's shoulder at their phone and immediately regretted it thing. So I'll help you spare the people around you. But we're also going to dedicate part of each episode to answer questions that we've been sent. As always, I'll include all the ways to reach us in the show notes. And our blog is hosted by Tumblr, which even gives people the options to ask questions anonymously. If you really want to go to you know that level of obfuscation. But truly, I just want to give people the chance to ask questions without judgment. And know in this safe space, you won't be shamed, you won't be judged, and you'll get well-researched answers. Just because something's on the first page of Google doesn't mean shit about its accuracy. And I care about accuracy. We've had enough smoke and mirrors in the world regarding sex and the feminine mystique. I want to pull back the curtain and get us all on the same page. So if you're not sure if the rest of the season's for you, here's some questions. Do you know the difference between the vulva and the vagina? Do you know the difference between sperm and ejaculate? or its consistency cycle? Do you not know if you really know what you're doing when you're going down on someone? Are you just really curious and like to learn new things? Well, no matter what you said to those questions, the answer is yes. (laughs) Plus, you can always skip an episode if the topic makes you feel squidgy. Just check the title and the episode summaries for any warnings. So thanks for sticking with us, and I'm super excited to take the next journey with you guys. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss a step over the rest of the season and follow us on social media so you can send us questions, comments, and or concerns. Your assignment for this week? Send us a question. Something you've always wondered or really never got the answer to growing up? Or send us to a friend so that they can get to listening, get caught up, and send us their questions. See you guys next time. Can't wait to chat.